Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game that comes as a suggestion from a subscriber uh, also from the Tata Steel Masters edition I didn't uh, uh, cover it uh, while it was uh, uh, while it was happening it's Parha Maksudu versus Arjun Erigaisi uh, I believe it's the penultimate round or maybe the round before that uh, I'm just gonna check I don't want to trick you guys uh, yeah from round 12 so from the penultimate round Maksudu with the white pieces and um, uh, Arjun Erigaisi with black uh, really a wild attacking game that uh, uh, well, uh, one player definitely takes advantage of, uh, but there was a moment during the game where everything could have been prevented. Uh, you guys will uh, help the, the losing side uh, try, try to avert that, but uh, in the game it did not happen. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, Parham with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, uh, and d5. Uh, Arjun goes for the Grunfeld defense. We have knight to f3, uh, the three knights variation, bishop to g7, and now uh, many moves are possible here, and many moves uh, have been played here numerous times, like c cap on d5 queen b3 bishop to g5 bishop to f4 uh, all of these very popular e3 like any move you you play here with white is basically theory uh, but parham goes for h3 and it's a very very rare move uh, that um, almost looks like uh, he's giving up a tempo uh, but uh, i mean uh, probably he had something in mind as he, he he prepared it for this game it is classical chess and okay uh, here arjun just castles we have c captures on d5 knight captures and pawn to e4 like you would have uh, against a normal Grunfeld. Knight captures on c3, b captures and pawn to c5. So everything absolutely the same. Bishop to e2 and now knight to c6. Black with the standard pressure on that d4 pawn and white looking forward to uh, advancing the pawn to d5 at some point maybe. So bishop to e3, c captures, c captures and queen to a5 with check. And now uh, bishop back to d2. You already see that uh, something very weird is happening here but okay bishop to d2 and now queen to a3 and although white would really want to play d5 uh, it's kind of a problem because the rook is still on a1 uh, but that's exactly what Parham uh, prepared for this game. He plays rook to, sorry, not that. Uh, he plays pawn to d5, uh, and uh, he offers the full uh, the, the exchange on a1. And uh, Arjun does not go for that. If you go for this, for example, bishop captures, queen captures, your knight is attacked. You have to move the knight somewhere. You can't uh, go uh, for this. The queen covers those squares. You have to play something like knight to d8. Then uh, Parham uh, controls this diagonal. The the dark square bishop is no more. Uh, maybe you can open up the h file which would be uh, deadly deadly for black, but uh, you don't even have to do that. You could just castle and then uh, play uh, with a strong center and with this beautiful control, like uh, at some point e5, d6 will create a pass pawn for white. You have the bishop pair. I mean, you're probably going to put a rook on d1, push that pawn, and life is good for white. So Arjun uh, doesn't want to have uh, anything to do with this. He instead moves the knight, knight to e5, and now uh, Parham castles. We have bishop to d7, and now rook to b1, putting pressure on the b7 pawn and bishop to a4 attacks uh, parham's queen on a on d1 queen to e1 and now the question is how do you uh, play this uh, the the position the position has been reached before uh, but uh, uh, it, it uh, uh, went a very very different way here one of the nicer moves you could play is knight captures on f3 and i'm just going to show it for example captures captures and bishop to c2 you attack the rook and it looks like a wonderful idea w what's uh, what's happening here if bishop to d3 the rook here is is kind of in a, a bad spot but you're going to play rook to b4 and now okay uh, bishop to d3 for the moment does nothing you can just defend uh, but what you can play is queen captures on a2 or rather what you cannot play because now bishop up to c3 and even though uh black did grab another pawn black has the two connected pass pawns on the queen side white will trade off the bishops the dark square bishop uh, will not uh, be uh, you know harassing white any longer and you will play e5 d6 create a pass pawn and uh, your pawn should be much faster than black's queen side pawn so that's the idea uh, arjun doesn't like this he plays knight to d3 instead and it is now as of move 16 that we have a completely new game so bishop captures queen captures and now bishop to g5 parham puts pressure on the e7 pawn and if he can gobble that up then he will have a pass to d pawn so rook f to e8 and now queen to b4 even though rook captures on b7 looks uh, really awesome uh, it's a very tricky line if rook captures Captures on b7, then look at this, bishop b5. And now how do you prevent queen captures on f1? 
Uh, bishop captures on e7, and now after queen captures on f1, queen captures, bishop captures, you're going to play king captures, and okay, you've grabbed some material, but look at this uh, beautiful d pawn. Uh, you do not want to play against that. So okay, after rook uh, f to e8, we have queen to b4, now putting pressure on the bishop, and pawn to b5. Uh, Arjun plays this very, very gladly. He wants to play a5 next, kick away the queen, then continue pushing his queenside pawns. Uh, rook b to c1, even though you could play bishop capture on e7 and create a pass the pawn right away, he first goes for rook to c1. He wants activity above all. He wants to put the rook on c7. So a5 attacks the queen. We have queen to c5, and now queen captures on e4. So he gives up even this beautiful central pawn to play rook f to e1. Uh, Parham just going for, for activity uh, and then, you know, uh, everything should uh, sh should be uh, uh, well. The position should play itself. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Queen to f5 by Arjun and now pawn to g4. Attacking the queen once again. Queen to c8 and now bishop captures on e7. And the passed pawn has been created. So what can Arjun do? Of course he can trade queens uh, but he starts pushing b4. He says if you want to trade let's trade everything on c8. Uh, but he doesn't. Queen back to e3. Now d6 is coming. So queen to b7 puts pressure on the pawn and pawn to d6. We have rook a to c8 offering a rook trade. Now knight to g5. As the rook is no longer on f8, the f7 square is uh, fairly weak and you could attack it with a move like queen f4. So here rook captures on c1, rook captures and now queen to d5 uh, taking care of... Uh, that uh, f7 weakness uh, queen to f4 and now we have queen captures on a2 you could play something in between like maybe h6 kick away the knight uh, but arjun says no need for that queen captures on a2 now he can start pushing his past b pawn uh, we have rook to c4 now cutting off the queen's defense of the f7 pawn now queen captures uh, is definitely a threat and the way to play this is to play f6 but it looks it looks ugly i mean not just because you can already start capturing but because you can even play knight and now black is just not in a great spot. Uh, sadly for black, this is black's uh, best hope of defending this position. Uh, queen captures rook is impossible, just knight captures with check, loses the queen. Uh, so, you know, you have to... Um... Uh, you have to play something like queen to a1 check and then bring the queen to e5 and hope you survive. Uh, but okay, that was not played in the game. In the game, pawn to f5 was played and this uh, just gives Parham a bit too much. He plays g captures on f5. Pawn to h6 and now just pawn to f6. He is allowing uh, h captures on g5 because he wants to play f7 with check. And okay, it's the only move uh, that Arjun has. h captures on g5, f7 with check, king to h7, and now f captures on e8. Bringing another queen into the game and parting with the queen on f4. So g captures on f4. And here comes queen to f7. And this is a beautiful, beautiful position uh, because... Um, uh, well, for one, uh, you are threatening many things, like uh, you could uh, uh, start advancing your, your pass pawn. Okay, the bishop is co covering this d7, uh, but it's something black will have to worry about for the rest of the game. However, there's the immediate threat of bishop to f6, uh, which will uh, create the threat of unstoppable checkmate. And it's not easy to get out of this. There is one way, and black can survive this, although he has to play a series of very, very precise moves. So feel free to pause the video and try to save this game uh, for our Arjun, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this incredible idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is uh, not bishop to e8, what was played in the game, but in fact, it's queen to a1 with check. And now after king to g2, just bishop to b3. That's the, the star move. And it seems like uh, everything is the same, but it's not. You can no longer play bishop to f6. The queen covers that square. Now we will see queen captures on f4, bishop captures on c4, and now queen to h4 check. It looks like uh, it's still going to be impossible to defend, but you have bishop to h6. And now after queen captures on c4, you will play queen to e5. Very important move. You don't allow the white queen to go behind the pass pawn. And also you don't allow d7 because queen captures on e7. So so here, look at this, queen d3 now prepares to push the pawn, now bishop to g5, again stopping the advancement, because if you push now, bishop captures, and yes, you can bring a queen into the game, uh, but just bishop captures, queen captures, and b3, and it will be black who will be winning this game. So uh, that's uh, not going to happen. So what you will have to do after bishop to g5 is go queen to g3, 
uh, offer a queen trade and now it doesn't really matter what you play if bishop to f4 you're just going to play queen to f3 and if queen to f5 now you're going to play queen to d1 uh, put the queen behind the passed pawn but now queen d7 you stop the advancement of the pawn and that's pretty much it so uh, that's what you should play and congratulations to everyone who found this uh, unfortunately for, Ar uh, for Arjun he did not find it during the game he played bishop to e8 which is also a fine idea uh, but it loses to a very uh, specific uh, idea that um, uh, Parham had in mind and that is uh, uh, after bishop to e8 queen captures an f4 uh, now the rook is defended uh, and uh, <laughs> Arjun can play b3 but now pawn to d7 and what do you play here uh, if you don't capture just d8 queen uh, so here bishop captures on d7 now uh, no longer black controls the f7 square queen back to f7 again threatening bishop f6 to go for checkmate uh, and even worse if you play b2 then rook to h4 is mate in one so you have to uh, be careful so queen to a1 check Arjun now plays it but a few moves too late we have king to g2 and now uh well, not, not a lot of moves you can play. Uh, he tries bishop captures on h3, which is a fine idea because if you capture on h3, then look at this. R queen to h1 check, king to g3, and black now has a perpetual. If king to f3, queen to h1 check. If you go further, then even b2 is possible. And now it's white who will have to be careful because if bishop to f6 now, you have queen to h6 check, plus you defend checkmate, and after king to e2 or wherever, you bring another queen into the game. And even though a rook to h4 is a possible, possibility it doesn't matter queen to b5 check now with two queens black will have no problems uh, keeping at least a perpetual uh, against the white king uh, but uh, even though this was move 39 uh, Parham plays uh, the correct move after bishop captures on h3 he just moves the king king to h2 and now uh, there is simply nothing for Arjun uh, th that can be done here he played queen to e5 check but now king captures on h3 and now it's very much different queen to f5 with check he offers a queen trade but the resulting endgame is lost for him g uh, queen captures g captures we have rook to c7 and now king to g6 you have to get out of the out of the way otherwise you're just going to lose the bishop and the bishop will be covering the b2 square so king g6 now bishop to a3 and now bishop to e5 attacks the rook but it doesn't matter white is just up a full rook rook to c5 was played bishop to d4 and now rook captures on a5 we have bishop captures on f2 and rook to b5 and he was in this position on move 47 that Arjun Ergesi resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here the rook is now behind the pass pawn it's on a light square you're just going to capture it you're up a full rook of course completely winning so crazy crazy game as one would expect um uh, both Parham and Arjun are very very creative players but here after this queen to f7 move which is uh, pretty crazy and it even uh, it even invites bishop to b3 which uh, we haven't discussed but now of course bishop to f6 as in other variation just wins the game for white it doesn't matter that you've uh, basically invited uh, black to, uh, to royal pin you but uh, it, it doesn't work so yeah after queen to f7 he had one chance of, of delivering this check to cover the, the, the dark squares and the bishop on g7 uh, but uh, he missed it he was already moved 35 I imagine he was under time pressure and uh, he missed it with with bishop to e8 uh, but yeah crazy game uh, very nicely done by by Parham uh, he uh, comes up on top and uh, he takes a full point and he had a great finish to the tournament he won uh, the, the last three games he played he won all three uh, so very very impressive stuff by him uh, but yeah that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it and that you were able to find this uh, pause the video uh, moment idea it's not an easy one to spot uh, but uh, hopefully uh, you, you you were able to do it and it uh, you know it, it not only improved your game but also your your day uh, so yeah, once again, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Taras Karpiak, Sasha Widler, uh, Amir Maron, uh, Paul Hinamund, and Edmund Freeman for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.